North Korea has about 300 military factories which employ an estimated 500,000 workers. Now this network has a solvent client, Russia. This is what South Korean analyst Yeon Jun Kim writes in an opinion piece for Defense News. The defense sector accounts for 30% to 60% of North Korea's overall economy and produces about $10 billion worth of goods annually. About $700 million goes to nuclear development and about $600 million to missile development. This year, North Korea began reorganizing its defense industry, which correlates with Pyongyang's recent intensification of cooperation with Moscow. Now, North Korea can support Russia by sending ammunition and other conventional weapons. The partnership provides an opportunity for North Korean labor to travel to Russia to learn about advanced defense technology, writes Yeonjun Kim. At the same time, the South Korean analyst fears that Russia is just the beginning and that the North Korean military-industrial complex may soon acquire new clients. He is also worried by the idea that Pyongyang will want to export not only artillery shells and high explosive missiles, but also nuclear warheads. Kim's ambitions have expanded beyond selling tickets to the Wonsan Spa Resort. Now, North Korea is seeking its own version of the South Korean defense industry, a powerful global exporter. The analyst writes, Recall in early August, Russia for the first time after a long pause struck Ukraine, with a North Korean missile. However, the missile did not reach its probable target, exploding in the air. The Russians used missiles most actively in this way in the first months of this year. Russia is likely receiving anti-tank missiles from North Korea. In late July, a Ukrainian drone spotted something stranger near Vovchansk. Upon closer inspection, the strange object was identified as a Bulse 4, a six-wheeled armored vehicle that functions as a mobile anti-tank missile launcher. Ukraine launched an armored offensive against Russia's weakly defended Kursk region, causing panic among the civilian population and forcing Moscow to urgently bring in additional troops. Villages near the Russian border were evacuated as hundreds of Ukrainian troops moved forward in fast-moving armored vehicles, the Wall Street Journal reports. Russia has deployed army units, border guards and warplanes to confront Ukrainian forces and said Wednesday it had stopped Ukrainian forces. Russian military bloggers close to the Russian military said Ukraine had captured several villages and advanced several kilometers in two directions. Ukrainian officials have not commented, but analysts said the move appeared to be a more serious incursion than previous cross-border raids in other areas that were carried out by lightly armed commandos who retreated after a few days. It is obvious that this is something completely new. This is a full-scale army operation, said Ruslan Pukov, director of the Moscow-based defense think tank CAST. The purpose of the raid was not immediately clear. Ukraine's frontline defenses are fragile against a larger and better armed enemy. Russia is advancing on the key Ukrainian logistics hub of Pokrovsk and is advancing on the nearby town of Chasovya, located on strategic heights in the eastern Donbass. Ukraine cannot open a second front. They need to stabilize the front line in Donbass, said Nick Reynolds, 
a research fellow in land warfare at the Royal United Services Institute in London. The speed and suddenness of the Ukrainian operation appears to have caught Russian forces by surprise. Ukraine may be hoping that Russia will divert forces from the front in eastern Ukraine, easing the pressure on Ukrainian forces there. Advancing forward could allow the Ukrainian army to disrupt Russian supply lines to its troops near Kharkov. The attack also demonstrates that Ukraine is not done with cross-border raids and that Russia should not sit quietly on its own territory, said Reynolds, a research fellow at RUSI. While senior Russian officials have downplayed the scale of the Ukrainian offensive, Russian military bloggers and volunteers close to the military say Kyiv's troops have entered a lightly guarded area with unprepared defenses and weak troops. They reject the official Russian line that the offensive has been halted, arguing that Ukraine is sending in reserves to continue its offensive while Russia struggles to bring in additional forces from afar. A state of emergency has been declared in Kursk Oblast, acting governor Alexei Smirnov reported. Among the reasons for this decision, he named the difficult operational situation in the border areas and the need to eliminate the consequences of the Ukrainian armed forces' entry into the region.